Welcome to Artifact Explorations with the Kelsey Museum of Archaeology. Today, we're going to talk about ancient glass. The Kelsey Museum houses one of the largest collections of Roman glass in the country, as well as important examples from New Kingdom Egypt through the 19th century in Iran. Much of our glass collections came from the excavations at Karanis and Dime in Egypt, Carthage in Tunisia, Seleucia on the Tigris in Iraq, and Sepphoris in modern-day Israel. Glass is made from widely available materials, sand, ash, and lime from crushed stone. The mixture is then heated or fired until it reaches a molten or liquid state. Then it is formed into vessels or other objects. The earliest glass vessels that we have come from Mesopotamia from around 2500 BCE and come in the form of glass beads. Hollow containers of glass followed approximately 1,000 years later and were formed by wrapping molten glass around a clay core. This is called core-formed glass. Decoration of core-formed glass involved adding pattern trails of contrasting color to the molten glass surface. When the glass cooled, the clay core was then chipped out. Ancient glassmakers developed increasingly elaborate techniques, which survived along with the ancient core-formed method. Glass vessels were sometimes made by pouring molten glass into a mold. This is called mold-formed glass and yielded great translucence and regularity in the shapes. After cooling, some glass vessels were treated with stone carving techniques, producing cut and wheel engraved features. These creations emulated those created from the rare and expensive crystal. Using a hollow tube to gather up a suitable amount of material, the molten fabric could be blown evenly into a mold like a skin. This is called mold blown glass. It could also be free blown into a hollow shell that was then shaped and worked while still hot. This is the same techniques used in modern glass blowing workshops today. Looking at the pieces of ancient glass, you may notice the color. While some clearly had color added to them at the point of creation, like this dark blue vessel, those objects that look like these with what looks like just a tint of color were actually clear glass when they were created. The brown, green, blue, and sometimes even purple hues of these pieces have developed over the nearly 2,000 years since they were created. As the minerals present in the raw materials, like copper or iron, begin to decompose, the color becomes more apparent. During excavations at Koranis, archaeologists uncovered an unheard of number of complete glass vessels. This gives us a unique look into the daily lives of those people living at Koranis. The glass also tells us something about the economy. Since no glass making facilities were uncovered at Koranis, these objects must have come into the city through trade probably from sites like Alexandria and what would become modern-day Cairo. We can also see the diversity and progression of glass-making technology through this large collection from a single site, as well as use it as a comparative collection with our other assemblages from sites across the Mediterranean. Thank you for joining us for Artifact Exploration today as we explored some of the Kelsey's glass collection. We hope you enjoyed it and join us again soon.